Well, hey there, Church of the Rock, Bronx Park. Uh, so glad to be with you, even if it's just online. Uh, we do have our worship team that's kind of all here on the stage, and we wanted just to have uh, a time where we could be together as, as a worship team and just even as a church where we can be praising and glorifying God together. And this is just a little bit of a, a foretaste to kind of whet your appetite for uh, us being able to finally have the chance to get back together and worship live and in person. And so we just wanted to be able to have this evening where we could be together as a church, just Bronx Park and our worship team, uh, where we can be able to worship God together. So I hope that you guys just enjoy wherever you're watching, uh, just get comfortable, and uh, I hope that, you know, whether you're in your home, uh, just stand or kneel or sit in your chair, and um, feel free to, to worship however you feel led to engage into the presence of God, and just uh, join along with us in the songs, uh, and we're going to have the lyrics up on the screen so you can follow along with us, and we just pray that uh, this time is a time that just really blesses you and continually just enriches your uh, faith walk and your journey with Christ. So before uh, we get started, we're just going to get going.
Lord. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching it. thank you that that is who you are and I love that song this song is not a song about God we need to be singing to you to remind you because you've forgotten who you are no this is a song for us that we need to be reminded of who God is that he's a way maker and a promise keeper that he is those things and we need to be reminded of that I, I 
It was amazing actually just listening to that song and, and I'm gonna share a thought with you in just a moment and just how fitting that bridge is that they were singing that even when I don't see it, God, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, God, you are working. And I'm just going to quickly read uh, from just a little devotional book. And uh, the verse that this is uh, talking about is Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. It says this. It's a kind of an interesting verse. I've never really looked at it this way before. And it says this, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Here's what the, the devotional thought says, that we must not expect to see an immediate reward for all the good that we do. Nor must we always confine our efforts to places and people that seem likely to produce a reward for, a reward for our labors. And then goes on to talk about how the Egyptians would actually cast their seed on the waters of the flooded Nile, which might seem like an absolute sheer waste. But in due time, the water subsided and the rice or the other grain would sink into the fertile mud and rapidly a harvest would be produced. Unlikely waters may cover hopeful soil, but nowhere will our labor be in vain in the Lord. Just this really interesting devotional thought on Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1, talking about... Um, how we've probably all gone through seasons of, of this, and maybe you're even in a season of this right now where you just feel like, God, I've been sowing seed in this area of my life, and it, it might be for you a prayer, a prayer that you have just been praying for and clinging to and holding on to, and you just feel like, God, I'm not seeing any results. Or I felt like for someone here that's, that's watching this and worshiping with us, um, You've been witnessing to another family member in your home, and it just feels like no matter what you say, no matter what verse you use or, or logical reason you have for explaining what you believe and hope in, that there just isn't any breakthrough. And, and you're maybe even at the point where you're just sort of feeling like they're never going to get it. They're just never going to get it. And where you almost feel like, I'm just going to give up because this isn't helping. And I wanted just to encourage you with that little devotional, because I feel like it's, it's speaking to so many of us in these situations, that God's word for you is don't give up. Even in those seasons where it, it feels like you're just flooded and, and overwhelmed, to continue to pour out good seed, to, to cast that out, to, to keep praying, to keep talking about what God has done in your life, to keep sharing those things, because in that Devotional talked about that when those things decide, that seed hit fertile ground and a great harvest was produced. And you know, sometimes it's amazing how we don't actually always get to see the fruit of our labor. Sometimes that doesn't happen till maybe we're in heaven and we actually get to see the impact and the effect of everything that is that we poured our life into and that we were doing on earth all to the glory of God. And so I just want to con continue to encourage you, church, keep going. Keep pressing in, keep going, even when you don't see that it's working, even when you don't feel that anything's going on, God is moving, God is working. He is doing a great work with the things that we are moving into and the good works that you're doing. So I wanted to just bless you with that tonight, church, and encourage you with that word. Let's continue just worshiping. Yes. 
is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fail? down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior.
before you and we just want to magnify and lift your name that in the name of Jesus there is so much power there's so much beauty there's so much amazement and God I think if we are all really honest we have maybe just lost the wonder and the glory of just your name and looking into your face being in your presence and just being amazed that the creator of the universe, the one who died for me in my place, loves me and welcomes me. What an amazing, amazing piece. I just want to read church from Isaiah chapter 54 verse 10. It says this, that though the mountains may be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. 
nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. You know, anytime you read something in God's word and it says, says the Lord, you can pretty much guarantee that uh, God's going to fulfill that promise. And I think this, this verse is so fitting in where we're at in our day and age and in our world that uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the mountains or you've driven through the mountains or uh, maybe you haven't gone there, but you've taken a road trip and you've just seen hills all around you. And I don't know if you've ever driven there and you've thought, oh, I'm pretty sure that would be an easy task to have those mountains shaken or those hills just sort of lifted up and moved from one place to the other. You know, they're, they seem pretty solid, pretty secure. And I think this passage in, in our day and age really points for us to the things in our life that it's not just this generic passage that's talking about some things, but we can really take some time and look at our lives and reflect on, God, what are some things in my life that I have looked at as a mountain or a hill, something that was unshakable, something that was unmovable in my life that I thought maybe had that, that pondering thought of, man, that'll, that'll never be changed. That'll never be shaken. And yet we're living in a day and age in this moment where some of those things have been shaken. You know, our economy and our finances and our job stability and, and all these things that we once maybe put too much trust in are now being shaken. And, and it's amazing to see that in a moment, how things can crumble, how things can fall. But yet God follows up with that and he says, yet my unfailing love will never fail. It will always be with you. And there's a covenant of peace that God has for you. And so we're just going to take a really quick moment, church, just to be in the Lord's presence. And we're just going to sort of be still before the Lord and just really allow the Holy Spirit to come and to reveal some of those pieces in our lives that we have put too much trust in mountains and hills that actually need to be shaken and need to be moved in our life in order to bring us to the place where we will actually come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you need to be that rock in my life once again. You need to be that solid thing. I, have, I admit that I put my trust in some other things and I need to repent of that and I need to be able to put my trust in you. So we're just going to take a moment and just be still before the Lord and just allow him to minister to us. Well, I feel that maybe there's some people that are with us tonight online and watching this, and uh, there's some things in your life that have been shaken. Maybe even some things in your life that have been taken and removed from you. And what I believe God wants to say to you is draw near to me. Come near to me. And I think there's a way in which, if we're honest in our faith journey, and maybe even some of the messages that we've heard about what the gospel is and how to live our Christian lives that we have gotten it mixed with. Okay, I just, I, I have faith in Jesus, but it's all these other good works that I got to do also. Or we, we take these things that in God's word, the gospel is, is that Jesus has done everything for you. Everything for me. His, it's his work and not my work. And that it just simply comes to the point where we need to repent of trying to do anything of my own strength and of my own will that will earn God's love or earn heaven or earn salvation or whatever that thing is that we're trying to strive and earn for. And God just says, look, I, I've done it all. You actually just get to receive this gift of eternal salvation and relationship with him and, and stop all the striving to try to earn his love. It's, it's his love that he wants to freely give us. And 
because he loves us, that out of the gratefulness of that, we actually want to do things to bring glory and honor to his name. And so God, we just come before you tonight and we just, we just repent of anything that we have tried to add to the gospel or to our Christian walk that is not supposed to be there and putting our trust and our faith in things that are being shaken. Jesus, would you have our hearts be returned back to you, the one who is never shaken, the one who is stable, the one who holds the entire universe in his hands, and would we put our lives in your hands once again. So uh, Jesus, we just thank you that you're here with us, that you are for us, that you're not against us, uh, and that you just want to have us come and draw near to you, that you see our heart, that you love us, but you want so many great things for us in our lives. And so God, we surrender ourselves to you again tonight. We're gonna close out with one final song. And so wherever you're at, would you just uh, engage with us as we just continue to uh, worship our God together. free church we are free i can't hear you guys 
We are free. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Bronx Park Worship Band. Uh, glad to be able just to have you uh, here and uh, worship. You guys did a fantastic job. Um, let's go, church. Uh, from this video and just walk in the freedom that Christ won for you, that he went to the cross, that we could be free, that we could live our life with no chains, no burdens, no grave clothes. We just shed those things off of us because we are free. Who the sun sets free is free, free indeed. Amen. God bless you, church.